Which I... I'm sure will be nothing but sunshine and rainbows. Like they always are. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. Mm. All right, we are back oh. with part two. Got games to it's talk time about. For stuff some things. video game news. Who wants to go first? I've got some stuff. Right. I've got some stuff as well. Go for um, it, man. Okay, cool stuff, though. Let's start off with something positive. Okay. Mario Give movie bad. sequel got announced Yay. for 2026. No That's surprises cool. there. I'm really excited to see what direction this goes in. I really kind of... I'm kind of hoping for, like... Um, they dive into like character backstories maybe a bit more. Well, like, they kind of did with the first film, didn't they? They, they? they did like they hinted at it with Princess Peach, and I'm kind of want to see. They did it with like, Mario and Luigi too with their family. Yeah, yeah, a little bit with the baby Mario and Luigi. Yeah, I kind of want to see like more backstory stuff, like give these characters more depth in the the movie world. I think that'd be kind of cool, like just a. Uh, you know, more, like, because I really loved the first film because it was simple and, like, you know, it was a Mario movie. Just basically. like Mario. That's why yeah, it was yeah. good, because uh, you, you basically before you a signed sequel, up for you what kind you of get want from them to, Before a sequel, you kind of want them to, like, expand on the characters and, like, go into stuff or, like, well, have, like a, a more interesting plot line. You got the teaser at the end of the first Mario film. Yoshi's going to be in Yeah, it, Yoshi. Then. So that's yeah. going to be a cool uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I wonder what they're going to do. Will they just do more fun Mario stuff uh, with a bit of, like, characterization sprinkled in here and there? Because they did a little bit of that the first film, even though it veered a lot more into just, like, the adventure yeah. Ma Mario formula. More than, yeah, like, you yeah. know, Mario has a tragic backstory. He killed a man and now he's on a redemption story. <laughs> I don't it's want like, anything like that, oh, but I want, like... But like you know, uh, maybe something, like, on the level of, like, the, the Mario RPG kind of, like... Story. Yeah, maybe. Yes. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Because uh, yeah. first film definitely felt like... Because that, that was such a good film. Because yeah. uh, it was it was fun. Uh, it was simple. Uh, it was Mario. And that is what Mario is, right? Simple and fun. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. si simple is in, like the, the best kind of simple. Where it's just like, you know, yeah. you, you play Mario game. You have, you have fun and it's solid. And, and yeah. they do the focus on that. So more of that is fine with me. Uh, I don't know if they were like changing up the format in a way, like you say, or like more character backstories and stuff. But they did that quite yeah. a fair bit in the first film too. So if anything, yeah, it's more kind of like, like extend. If anything, yeah. it's more like uh, doing more of what was already pretty good in the first film, making it a bit better. Yeah, yeah. But I'm excited for it. I want to see who's gonna voice Yoshi. World. Yeah, that is. I look. I Yoshi <laughs> doesn't speak English, and that's gonna freak me out. When he just says his name in, in a high pitched yeah. tone. Yeah, I mean, and he has like weird songs like that don't that are in like really high pitched tones as well. So, I mean, Yoshi doesn't really speak though. Like that is gonna be a hurdle to get past if they're gonna make him speak. I mean, he I did say Yoshi at the end of Mario Movie One. He did, but unless he talks that's... normally and then just says Yoshi sometimes oh, here and no, there. Weird. I don't want that. That's, that would freak me out. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be like Link talking. Really? Which, I mean, that's gonna freak me out as well. Yeah. Well, the plan <laughs> to do that too. So uh, yeah. Look forward to that one. Oh yeah. We'll see. I think Yoshi will just make normal noises. Yeah, I think so. I'm being honest. It'd be a bit weird if he starts talking English. He's a dinosaur. It'll be know? funny if he has a voice actor in general. But yeah. funny in a hilarious sense, because I'm just imagining the said uh, probably Hollywood uh, level uh, like a film star voice actor doing Yoshi oh sounds in the mic. Who's gonna voice Yoshi? <laughs> like, oh. And then, and then I reckon like maybe they'll bring in Daisy as well, since there's all that like they did want to bring Daisy in the first movie, so maybe they'll take this opportunity and bring Daisy in. So yeah. I reckon Daisy will probably be in there. As well. Yeah, I don't think Yoshi will just be even new. They're the only new character input in that no. movie too. Oh, They'll probably so introduce more characters it. as well. I hope Wario. Wario is another one too. They might release him for this film. Maybe they'll do it for the third. Who knows? Yeah. We'll see. Who knows? There's not really a lot of information right now. I'm really glad Mario movie sequel happened 2026. I can't wait. Um, so let's go down. Persona 6. Whoa. It's going multi-plat and it's coming probably to Switch 2. This is like is this big official rumors. or just a rumor? No, nah, big rumors. Big okay. rumors. But yeah. 
But I, I believe the guy who leaked it because he got everything right about Persona and Atlas. Mm. Uh, First time so, for everything, but we'll see. We'll see, but he's, he was so spot on about P3R uh, R, and he was spot on about like a bunch of Yeah, <laughs> do you remember that clip uh, of Yukari yeah. doing like a cool animation? Everyone was like, it's fake, it's so fake. It turned yeah. out it was the most realist thing in the whole yeah. world. Yeah, 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 that was legit, yeah. Was that him, same by the way? Yeah, same league. Oh, yeah. oh okay, all right. Okay, so, so he, has, um, he has got some credence to him. He's got a lot of credence, this guy. Uh, yeah. I can't remember his name, but yeah, he's a big guy. He's basically the uh, big Atlas leaker at this point. So. Uh, I see. I thought uh, I'd avoid him okay, when I it comes to SMT5 engine some, stuff. Let, let's go over some sad news. Sad news? Oh, yeah. yeah I think the I know what you're going to say. artist for Tales oh. of yeah, Series. Yeah. Mi Mitsu... Isu I can never pronounce the name. Mits Mitsu Asuma passed away and just age 63. Mm -hmm. Like, we lost two legendary people. Yeah, Kira Toriyama also sadly yeah. passed away in his 60s yeah. too. It's really too, yeah. it's too young of an age when you really think about 60s. it too much. They both passed away in their 60s. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was like the character, the main character artist for like the Tales series. She's been doing it like since day whole... one, has she? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sad. She cooked with Velvet. Oh, yeah. She was really good with Velvet. One of my favorite yeah. female video game characters. And I don't even play a lot of Tales, but I played Tales of Bessera and I was like, yeah, I'm digging this revenge story. Yeah, Velvet was a really good character. Like, a lot Love of the design. characters in Tales of Bessera cool. were really good. She was such a good character artist. I don't know what they're going to do. Like, she's been like the mainstay character. I don't know if she's the only character artist, but like obviously there's a lot of more people, but you know, she was like one of the big ones for Tales. One of the like, OGs. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, we've not actually talked about, we've talked about Toriyama on an LP, yeah. Yeah, but we haven't really yeah. talked about it during a podcast episode. Yeah, no. Let, well, Toriyama is just, do you know what? Without Toriyama, I really thought about this, right? Because Toriyama was like, one of the people who pioneered in in a sense with like the help of his art style was one of the people who pioneered dragon quest well and yeah that's like one of the first he pioneered JRPGs. a lot of things yeah, not just know, dragon ball like one of dude the first... is like not just an inspiration he's almost like a v inspiration because yeah there's so much media that has something from dragon ball or dragon ball z and that goes for Dragon yeah. Quest as well in terms of uh, uh, RPGs yeah. and, well, video games as well, because those are both two really big influential game series. And let's not forget yeah. Chrono Trigger as well, which is yeah. also massive and pioneered yeah. a lot of stuff um, for Square's future stuff as well. Yeah. After that. Uh, he was, like, literally one of the... Oh, and I did I did see what you were talking about. Recognizable art style. Like, with... Um the Final Fantasy 7 thing. I looked it up. Uh, we, This episode will be out by the time of the Pokemon episode where we had that talk where you said about him playtesting Final Fantasy 7. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he was one of the first people to uh, to play FF7. DLG, ah, yeah, I told FF7. you. Yeah, there you go. One of the first, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he they gave wanted his like, input. a glowing review and like, oh, yeah. They had like a whole thing where he like said the future of like RPGs and like cinematics and it's actually quite, uh, it got translated. I did post it on the video, but yeah, there's um, a link to it. Someone posted like a translation of it. Yeah, video. man. But, Ar um, Argentina in shambles were. And yeah. Chile and uh, Ch Chile and, uh, and Mexico. All the, all the Latin American cities who literally worship that man like a god. And, like, have you yeah. seen all the news on like the parades and like all yeah, the. Yeah, he got mentioned in yeah, like, press all, conferences and shit. All the like, collective yeah. spirit bombs in honor of Akira Toriyama. Yeah. And they're singing the theme for Dragon Ball and stuff on the streets and shit. It's oh, like, I know, yeah. And uh, apparently, I don't know if this is true, but crime rates in Mexico, uh, specifically cartel crime rates, from what I've heard, actually go yeah. down at when an episode of Dragon Ball Z aired. That's so Or well, specifically funny. Super, I, I, I think. I don't know all my information That's, on that. I don't uh, want to spread too much misinformation, but I just no, read stuff don't, uh, like that. Yeah, it, it's it, really I mean, funny. It might be a joke, but that is funny if it's true, because, like, yeah. 
The man with such an influence. I mean, without him, I really don't know if JRPG would be where they are. I don't know? think a lot of things would be where they are without the man, to be honest. He was honestly a legend. It's, it's so sad. He was gone too soon. He had so much more. Man, to it was so that. weird. Just wake up in the morning and go on Twitter and just seen some guy go, Akira Toriyama, he was such a cool guy. I'm like, what do you mean was a cool guy? And then just scrolling up and seeing the actual like, news and going, oh, fuck, what? Yeah. No, that's a real one, though. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad, yeah. man. Just wake it's up and so seeing sad. like seeing statements from Oda who did One Piece and Kishimoto who did Naruto. Oh no, yeah. Because they were right. like massively influenced series oh, by God, Dragon yeah. Ball. In fact, I feel. Oh yeah. I feel like most, if not almost, all manga has had like an influence of Dragon Ball in like some shape or form. Most shown in anime. Like in most is, media yeah, has got something. Yeah. yeah. You can make like yeah, a fucking it's ten like hour. Jojo, you know that. You can make like the a ten-hour ten like uh, a compilation video on like references of Dragon Ball in <laughs> yeah, everything. in other media. Yeah, and even yeah. the dude oh, who oh, made and, Dragon Ball Evolution apologised as well. He was like, yeah, yeah. sorry sorry about the live-action film, bro. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, the guy who like, one of the actors apologised for Dragon Ball Evolution when he died. I was like, oh, that is funny. Yeah. yeah, age 68, brain hemorrhage he died from. Yeah, it's really sad, man. It's too yeah. young, especially for too such young. like a influential and creative mind like his. It's yeah. really sad stuff. But everyone uh, all over the world has shown like so much love and, and yeah, like all these tributes 100%. to to it as well. Like uh, in uh, in uh, about a couple of days back uh, in in Peru, someone made a massive, huge mural, and it was done by about fifty artists, and it looks fucking wicked. I haven't seen that. Like, you have to send me a picture. Yeah, yeah, no, mm. mate, mate, it's fantastic. Yeah, fifty artists yeah. worked on it. Whoa! I'll have to see that. That's that's amazing. Yeah, literally everyone was influenced by this man in some shape or form. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, oh, and, and Sandland's getting good reviews, which is also funny because that's like the last thing he ever worked on, really. Yeah, basically. wasn't he half was he halfway through working now? He didn't finish it, did he? No, Sandlands is out. Like it's a complete game. Like it's Well it's what out. was he working on uh, at the time during his death? Uh Before I think his death. it might have been Dragon Quest twelve. Oh, it was Dragon Quest, was it? I think it was Dragon Quest twelve. Don't quote me on that, I'm not okay. entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure like Dragon Quest was, oh and and also the Dragon Ball he left the uh, freezer like black in it what you said oh, <laughs> that's sorry the way you said that was really funny but I, I know yeah what no, you're no saying, the, yeah. The black freezer black freezer uh, like is kind of like the, he introduced black freezer and that was it like that was like yeah oh like, the uh, manga is literally like. A, yeah, I've not read it, but the power scaling is, is kind of whack, but... Yeah, yeah. I love Dragon Ball Super. I mean, do you remember yeah. when the final episode came out with, like, Goku and Frieza versus Jiren? Oh, yeah, And, yeah. like, people are watching it in, like, arenas. And, like, it's a big, giant mm -hmm. national event in so many countries. I've just seen everyone, like, cheers. So cool and so oh. hype. Uh, yeah. yeah, rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. One absolute real one. Rest in peace. You've deserved your rest, uh, yeah, created you left the world so in a much place cool with stuff of content. Yeah, one of the most probably one of the most influential creators uh, in all of time, probably. Probably, I would say he's up there. Cheers, mate. Rest in peace. Aww. If I had a drink, I'd pour one out for him. <laughs> uh, so uh, other news. Let's see. Um, oh, recent, very recently, yesterday, did you see the Paper Mario Thousand Year Door uh, trailer? No. Oh, dude, they redone the intro of uh, the Thousand Year Door, and it looks amazing the way they've done it. Like a the intro style. for the Thousand Year Door. I just, you know I, that? I remember there being a book, Ten You of the yeah, Legend of the yeah. Stars, and when yeah, it goes yeah, to the yeah, tile that, screen. That thing, yeah, but now they've done it like in a. A sort of like pop-up star where it shows like how like everything happened before the start of the game you know like the town going under and everything yeah cute yeah it's really cute oh it looks really good nice. i'm so excited for the that game, game had some lore so it's cool that they're giving it more love in the remake yeah Remastered i'm really i'm looking i'm actually really excited to see all the changes yeah me too 
Yeah. Me too. Uh, oh. FF7 Rebirth um, uh, is not selling great. Is this because it's on the PS5? Possibly. Um, well, let, let me say, uh, this is uh, the most recent sales figures um, in Japan. Uh, FF7 Rebirth sold less than Final Fantasy 16, which sold yeah, 2,630 copies, which is 22% mm. less than FF16. Mm. It's quite a substantial amount when you really think about it. Yeah. Um... I I don't know where like how they like I don't know how well it did outside. I think they're on. Oh, it's highly now, rated. The highest. I think it's one of the most highest rated Metacritic games uh, or Final Fantasy yeah. games. At least. I think it's two. Yeah, it's. I, I really think it's because Japan just don't play home consoles anymore. Like as weird as that sounds, I just think they are. These sales figures. They just. Are they just in Japan? Handheld. Sorry. These figures are only in Japan. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how it's sold around the rest of the world, but like for Final Fantasy not to sell like great in its home country is quite a telling sign on, on like yeah, cause that's worrying because I think this is like I feel like Final Fantasy's really dropped down on Japan's like level of importance now. Hmm. It's kind of crazy. I never thought I'd see the day where Final Fantasy drops down. Like, do you think it's be, Final... do you think it's because uh, just they don't play home console? I do think like it's the push towards like the hybrid systems or PC. A lot of them are like really into PC out there as well. Yeah. I don't. I just. I don't know. Like, it's very like. It's it's a lot of factors, but I do think they are more predominantly handheld and mobile phones now than they are like home consoles. Mm, yeah, maybe. Plus, there's also the knowledge that it will eventually come out to PC as well, so a lot of people might be waiting for that release. Yeah, that, that's that also probably goes the other towards thing, it right? Too, right? Yeah, I think yeah, I think like people are not. I think it's almost a detriment now to PlayStation where because there's no exclusive exclusives anymore. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 I can't. Do you know what? I can't think of a single one off the top of my head. Yeah, like besides oh, Demon Souls I, remake. I even think I, I even think Stellar Blade, that new one coming out. I yeah. even think that will go to PC at it some point. It wouldn't even surprise me if it did, to be honest. Like, I just don't think exclusivity is, like, a way forward now for these consoles. I feel like a lot of people are like, well, why... You play the same mm. way as the Xbox and the PC and, the, you know, you're just a PC. I could just play you on the PC. Why can't I just play mm. the PC version? Yeah, that's got a lot of people mindsets now. Yeah, it, it's true. I mean, there's factors like you know specs that if a PC yeah. is able to like play these sorts of games, but yeah, there's also the sense true. that the way to get these specs is a lot easier than getting the PS5 because yeah. not only are PS5s stupidly expensive as well as their games that come out too, uh, it's also kind of hard to get as well. Yeah, and they also take up a lot and of room. Yeah, the, I mean, the well, well yeah, the, 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 they are quite massive as well, yes. The form factor is not great on a PS5, I'll say. <laughs> you have it held, you kind of have it like a Mine's, radiator. Just mine like, is outside of my shelf because it doesn't fucking fit inside it. It's too, it doesn't fit it's in too the shelf. Taller. Yeah, so I put, I put it and outside then there's my like shelf. All the, and now getting on to my other piece of news, there is talks... And, like, this isn't even, like, rumours at this point. This is happening this year. Like, it got leaked. But PlayStation 5 Pro is already, like, happening this year. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like this generation of consoles is being the most strangest. Because it's been, like, wow, it's nearly been, like, four years. Mm, the PlayStation 5 is halfway through its lifespan. Yeah. Bitch. And I'm just Feels looking like it's even started. Yeah, I'm looking at, like, the game selection. I'm like, what? Like, there's, like, five games on this thing. Mm -hmm. It's been out for four years, and there are five games on this thing. PS4 still going strong. Yeah. My bro console. PS4 still gets games. It still gets games. Yeah. People it should aren't do. upgrading. <laughs> they should do, because not everyone has got a PS5. 
Yeah, I mean, like, I it hasn't I like purely... properly it hasn't like properly pushed its way into like the common console to get if that makes any sense. Yeah, like people still pick up PS4s. Yeah, like, that's how like like PS3. Yeah, it feels like that time has passed that's now. That's gone, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, but PS4 feels like it's persisted for such a long time now, and it feels like a technological like well, not even technological. It just feels like a peak. In a way, because yeah. like the PS5 like has pushed stuff, but it's not to the point where it's making a lot of people go out and get them. The only thing it's been pushing right now are its fucking prices. Yeah, and that's I mean, probably been too insane. much of a push, to be honest, for a lot of people. Yeah, I think. And not only that, it is just now easier and cheaper to you know get a PC, and buy games on PC, and get specs for your PC, and, and just play yeah. them on Steam. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, the deals on Steam are always better than what you get. Like on, yeah, because games are like seventy quid now, and it's yeah. really steep for this day and age. It is like some games, I would say, okay, maybe it's worth it, but mm. then I'm just like, it is very hard yeah. to justify seventy pounds. And then there's other games which not only are seventy quid, but also come attached to a bunch of other bullshit and like oh, microtransactions yeah. and stuff like that, which is another yeah. piece of news which I feel like would be a fun thing to talk about. Oh yeah, go on. What so uh, um, there's 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 been uh, there's been a lot of lot of contention about the release of Dragon's Dogma Two. Oh, that was actually on my new bulletins as well. Should yeah, we talk about that now? Yeah, we can talk about that. So with Dragon's Dogma Two, uh, um, so the problems are is that you can't delete saves. However, that I believe was a thing in the first game too. By the way, for the record, uh, I've not played Dragon's Dogma One. I've not yeah. played Dragon's Dogma Two. Either. No. Been interesting too, though. I still am, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Um, Capcom being Capcom, though, they're yeah. still doing their little microtransactions, and where yeah. basically it gives you like a leg up, where yeah. it, for things that are like already in, in the game that can be earned. Bit... They've done it in Resident Evil Four. They've done it in Devil May Cry Five. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I did it with Devil May Cry Four Special Edition too, and that came out. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, Dragon's Dogma 2 has microtransactions, um, and uh, the thing that is irking people, I will say a lot of people are jumping the gun with it as well. Yeah, but I heard about this as well. They have got a lot of things to be rightfully angry about too. I mean, I don't agree with microtransactions, even if they are I optional. Don't agree. I, look, even if they are look. optional, it's kind of like an enticement factor alone, sort of like... Yeah damages yeah. the game's reputation a little bit and the thing it is does. is that it's not just like a hack and slash or uh, an adventure shooting game it's a massive J uh, rpg o yeah and it's yeah. open world and, and uh, i feel like uh, the design philosophy of like yeah. getting rare items early kind of like it, the just knowing that the microtransactions it, to get the items easy sort of contradicts its like design for speed. Does, does, yeah, does that make any does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah. it no, sort of tarnishes because, right. the like rep a little bit. But, right, I'll I mean, say, you could just say ignore it, but the fact that it's like there is just a bit jarring, and you can ignore it. But I still feel like it's like you know, right? Because it's an so, RPG with rare items, it's a little bit. Mm -hmm. Look, the dodgy. way I see it, right is I don't like it because what you said, it ruins the design philosophy. And however, how do you know? I'm not saying it's with Dragon's Dogma, but like down the line, another game in the future where Capcom get a bit more greedy and be like, okay, we'll lower the rates of how rare this item is to eventually they'll go and buy it in our microtransaction. Like they could just adjust the rates so it's super, super rare. And it's very, very rare unless you pay. Like yeah, it's just and it's just a bit of a blemish having that on a game of like a, a game that is like encouraging you to do side quests and explore and sink hours into it. Whereas yeah, there's just like a it, button that you can like just pay yeah, a little money for to just get it, it just it, like it, that, it pray, right? It preys. It's like it's like predatory because it preys on the the like. It's almost like oh, I'm so tired of doing this. I could just skip it and yeah like, i know what you mean yeah it. and the things and, and, in and question it on that it's like it's the, like the things in question uh, i believe are things like uh an item that you can get for fast travel there's a thing that yeah. actually now th this is a thing that i don't really agree on uh, and i'm hoping it's not misinformation because i've done research but yeah again it's only to like a little bit of an extent uh, but there's also an item that apparently uh lets you change your look 
Yeah, and that's kind of silly. I feel like that should always be an option to change the yeah. look of your character whenever you want. Yeah. It, it shouldn't be an item. It certainly shouldn't be an item that is hard to yeah. come by to the point where you've, you've got to pay for it. And I think that's what a lot of the items that are part of the microtransactions are, is that they're hard to come by items. So it's microtransactions well, I, for the sake of convenience, right? Yeah. But that's not the only well, problem, though. I don't know though. if they're hard to come by because I haven't played the Me game neither. myself. Me neither. But this is just what this is just based on yeah. what I've read from certain articles yeah. here and there. Apparently like, you can come by some items. I'm not up in arms about it. Yeah? I just yeah. think it's a little bit like, uh, it's not great, I, but I it's not think it's not turning me off the game because apparently the actual, the actual game is amazing. Uh, yeah. If you can get it running on PC. Yeah. There's been apparently. lots of complaints that That's apparently... That's the biggest one. Yeah, yeah. it's poor, it's poor, poorly PC. optimized PC performance, which a lot of yeah. people are annoyed about as well, which is a bit yeah, of a shame. Yeah, which I hope they fix. Yeah, um, the, the developers have addressed actually a lot of the issues of the game that they're going to sort out. I think they're actually going to... Hang on a minute, let me actually look at the articles. I don't, cause I don't want to like do my God-given right to spread inf misinformation all of a sudden. Misinformation, yeah. <laughs> we don't no. want to do that as no, just no, nerdy no. gamers who play video games yeah. for a YouTube yeah. channel. Let's have a look quickly. So, uh, uh, so Dragon's Dogma uh, 2. I'm definitely looking at my Discord for this. Here it is. Mm -hmm. Right, so what they're planning to do is that they're adding the option to start a new game when save data already exists, which means more save files. Oh, that's good. That should be something that you should have in the beginning of the game, but God. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like they're that way for a lot of games. Thank you, Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was also a thing in Dragon's Dogma 1, from what I've yeah. heard. Uh, oh, that's crazy. Honestly, yeah. that is mental. Um, they're changing up uh, um, an item that is available at pawn guilds. They're like, apparently yeah. they're raising it to 99. Um, uh, they're making quests where players can actually like save and rest, uh, uh, oh, along with good. bug fixes and stuff like that. That's for all platforms. Yeah. Um, as for Steam, which is the big point of contention, yeah, is that they're improving quality for resolution. And uh, they fixed. They're, they're, they're basically giving it a big like overhaul in terms of like models and like quality for like graphics and mm, stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, hopefully that will fix some things for players. Dragon's Dogma 2, because apparently uh, when it does work and you do play and you ignore the crappy microtransactions, it's pretty damn good. Yeah, but some people can't ignore those microtransactions because some people That's the thing. are like, like, pred like predatory. It That's is the predatory. thing. Because it's easy to it's say almost, ignore them, you know but what? sometimes you just you just can't. It does like is a little bit of a it blemish. Plays on your head while you're playing the game as well. It's like <laughs> yeah, your your mileage may vary with it, but it just it just shouldn't be there really. It shouldn't you? be there. Yes. It shouldn't even be <laughs> in 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 some ways. I actually feel like it's scamming people. Like it's a, a yeah. legit scam. Yeah, like it's a, a it's easy to over. Yeah. Look, uh, it's easy to overlook in DMC5 and Resi 4 because they're so easy to get. And like the only microtransactions that aren't like in game you can unlock are like purely cosmetics. And I'm not gonna lie, the ones for RE4 are pretty crap anyway, so I didn't bother with them. Uh, but yeah. that's just my opinion. I digress. But yeah, I don't think um, it's fine. It's fine with anymore. those games, but with a massive full scale open world RPG where some items are hard to come by, some are easy from what I've heard, some are like really hard and silly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The fact that there's like a microtransaction for it and for convenience uh, might be maybe decent for some who don't have a lot of time. But at the there's, same time, it's like it's still like you got paid for it, and it's you know what? yeah, it's a bit. Bleh. There's a really weird item that's really available like for from, from, uh, a microtransaction, and it's called the Escape from Gal Key, which is oh, yeah, literally the key to get out of the prison, which is the starting area of the game. And I'm like, are you, uh. like, that's that's <laughs> really scammy and scummy. Yeah. Like, like, why would you? Why? Like, you're starting the game. And they're like, oh, you can just escape by buying your way out mm -hmm. with real money. Doing uh, a little bit of um, a little bit of Konami with Metal Gear Survive, like the save files yeah. and stuff like that. And of course, the Yakuza deaths for oh, New Game Plus and don't, stuff like that. You know, it's like, oh, Capcom, it's a slippery slope. It's such a slippery slope. They need to, like, understand yeah, that. for a lot of their games now. Big. It's not, not cool. I don't really like it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, 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 and I do think it's funny how reviewers didn't even call them out on it when they were reviewing the game. Mm. Which I feel like is wrong. I feel like reviewers should call people out and stuff like that. Maybe some weren't aware of these, unless maybe they had like maybe, a super yeah, computer and it was fine for them and, and they yeah. didn't know about microtransactions because I feel like the microtransactions did come out after the oh, game God. was released for everyone else because some people did oh, get early access to it. Yeah, yeah. Some weren't even aware from what I've that's, heard. So that's that, also a That sucks for them because uh, now, yeah. they, now they look like corporate shills as a result, which is really yeah, crap. That, that's also something that I don't agree with when reviews don't get like the full picture and they're like, oh yeah, there's going to be microtransactions. A bit like back in the day when, uh, was it Crash Team Racing came out? Oh and God. Then they added oh, microtransactions God. in. Yeah, there. I remember that. Yeah, oh man, that was bad. <laughs> oh yeah, I wasn't a yeah. fan of that when I bought that game. Sadly, I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, they they tried to find a way to increase the longevity because like a online uh, like thing, they wanted it to last. Yeah, they wanted it to be a thing yeah. that happens like every they month, added loads new, of new events and stuff it, though, like that. They? Yeah, it's cool to adding stuff to it here and there. It's just uh, it's just at the rate that I remember that the rate you got coins in game uh, was absolute was dog shit yeah. to the point where yeah. just getting easy access to like a bunch of coins just like that just again it's enticement factor it's how they get you yeah and that's yeah. where the predatory sort of like quote unquote yeah. word comes in for a lot of people and it's just it's just crappy I just don't like yeah, it yeah it is it plays on addiction it's not nice it's not nice just having that there I mean you can yeah. ignore it but it will, it will vary to like how much you can actually close it off do you want to talk about something else crappy I can it's you, also you know another game you, in the it's not, that's it, number it's two not a game. <laughs> we, well, we it's always not do a game. this I feel like on the news section sometimes we go like oh I know what you're talking about and then we say the thing we're like don't. that's not what I had in well, mind but but continue right, but <laughs> keep cooking do you know about do you know about the whole Nintendo situation with emulation oh I've heard things yeah, Capcom's uh, also another so, like. Uh, sorry to change subjects, but Capcom yeah. another blemish on them is that they're super like anti-piracy. Yeah. To the point where they're docking a lot of like mods and shit. Yeah, yeah, they it's, are. It's Capcom not. It's not a good look. Doing terrible shit. Yeah, what the fuck they got against Tramp Stamp Leon? Man. It's a revolutionary mod. What the hell yeah. are they thinking? <laughs> Fools. <laughs> It's been around <laughs> since like the early 2000s. You can't, you can't dock tramp stamp Leon like that. Man, Nintendo are on a war path with emulation. <laughs> oh, like, I heard uh, about this. This is uh, about their Yuzu, isn't it? I think they're called them. Yeah, Yuzu. Yeah, Yuzu. Yeah, like, that's cool. right. Basically, Yuzu was like a big Switch emulator. That's right. right. Yeah. Um, which understandably I get why Nintendo's annoyed because Switch is like their main system and like you don't want people pirating your games because did you then do you know by the way how many copies of uh, Tears of the Kingdom were pirated thanks to Yuzu? Like one thousand or something. More than one that. Million? Yeah, a million. million. Something, yeah, yeah, a million. Yeah, that's a lot, and I, I get that point of view. I do understand that point of view on emulation. I understand where Nintendo's coming from. However, I don't, like, thanks to the whole Yuzu thing, I think Citra, which is the thing Oh, Citra plays, got hit um, as well. They're a 3DS yeah. emulator. Yeah, yeah, I used to use just, them. They decided to be like, I'm I'm done. I'm, yeah, they did. Like, we don't want to be taken down, so we're... we're yeah, down. yeah, it's... Uh, Nintendo have got an iron grip on emulation for a lot of people. Yeah, and, like, okay... I, I'm, I am not, like, I'm not an emulator person, but I do, I get both sides, I do understand both sides. Current, games that are currently available on the market, I do not think you should be able to emulate. I think that's wrong. Okay. But, but games that are like, games that are really old. That are crusty and ancient, that don't have ports yet. And really yet. hard to get a hold of. Like 3DS games, for example. Yeah, like 3DS games. I feel like you you could like and DS as well, unless Nintendo's gonna actually put the 3DS and DS on the Switch. Oh, or whatever. Give that like five or ten odd years. Yeah, another five or ten odd years. Like I understand if people want to play these games and they don't have the means to get them. I get that. It's preservation. But it's preservation as well. Like I understand the preservation argument because some of these games just 
go out of existence and you'll never see them again. Yeah. Um, the thing that yeah. saddens me, uh, which is really, which is might might be a little bit of a lopsided way of thinking about it, but I'm just super impressed that Yuzu actually found like a hole in Nintendo's like I'm not a program, but I assume they found like a hole in their code to actually like ev successfully emulate uh, Tears of the Kingdom and other Switch games. And yeah. uh, Nintendo found them out and were like, all your hard work, fuck off with that shit. No. Yeah. It's getting absolutely demolished straight away. Like, it was yeah. unflinchingly and unquestionably just completely yeah. shutting them down after like what one million downloads of Tears of the Kingdom. Like, I'm impressed, not gonna lie. So, uh,. You, but but you know, uh, by like, the end of the day, uh, that's not gonna go under Nintendo's radar, sadly. So, so you know, like there's a there's a flash cart now for the Switch, right? Yeah. And like, obviously Nintendo would hate that. But if you use it like in a legal manner, it's actually technically legal. It just depends on how you use it. <laughs> like, if you use the flash cart, say you've already bought the game, right? Um, I don't know, say you've already bought uh, Tears of the Kingdom or whatever, but you want it on the flash cart just mm -hmm. for like storage purposes because you could load up the flash cart with the games that you've already bought yeah. and hold it for like storage purposes because obviously you don't want it like, and then have it all on one cart. Uh -huh. I understand that idea of, of a flash cart. Mm. Obviously, I don't understand the idea of like downloading the games that you don't have and then like playing them for free. Yeah. Like, that's that i get so if there's like a way to like you know lock people off from doing that but letting you download your games onto a flash cart that you've already got like like the games you've already got onto a flash cart that that i could see the benefit of because it's like then you could have all your games on one cartridge you know and then like it's like a storage convenience like you don't have to take those and those little cartridges with you yeah i could see that working but yeah, I mean, Nintendo are just like no to everything that's emulation. Well, I blame them for having shit security with their like. <laughs> they, yeah. they, they, they let someone actually do this uh, with like their games mm. and like it's, maybe mm. they, maybe they should just get better security. But a lot of a lot of uh, consoles get hacked eventually, don't they? To be honest, like, yeah. Uh, eventually, all em eventually all consoles get emulated. It's true. Yeah, they all so get done I, I just think the hackers always win. Like the, <laughs> the the people who like do this stuff always win in the end. Like they'll find a way to bypass it. Like, there's always a way. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm on I'm on like I see both sides. I think Yuzu were like wrong in the sense of like the whole having a Switch emulator for reasons like they did. Mm. Um, and a patron but, as well, didn't they? Yeah, I had a Patreon for money. Yeah. Which, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen now because I heard, like, another company uh, that was, does, like, uh, DS uh, emulation is, like, bowing out as well. So I feel like... Is this someone really, separate to Citra? I think it's someone separate to Citra. There's another, like, emulation. Uh, oh, I see. Like, uh, but a lot of the emulators are folding now. They're just like, nope, nope, we don't want to do it. Damn, no SMT4 emulation for me. Nah. I was using maybe Citra for that. Maybe Sad. they'll remake SMT4. That'd be cool. <laughs> we'll see. That'd be good. We'll see. Um, I'm not holding my breath. So, though. and one one more piece of news I've got is Toys for Bob have agreed to enter into an agreement with Microsoft for their first oh, game after going yeah. indie. Yeah, Toys for Bob have uh, agreed with Microsoft for their first game. Hmm. Um, Would you say Spyro the Dragon is indie? I think it's Spyro the Dragon 4, in all honesty. Okay. But if, I, if I had to bet, because uh, did you see their um, their message uh, when they said they were going indie? No. Oh, well, they said in their message uh, at the end of it, they said, keep your horns on. Ah. Uh, so... Well played. I mean, I feel like that's a cheeky nod. Maybe. I think. I think they're working on slick. Spyro. Very slick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just because they're indie, I, I still think like they can do. They can still use Microsoft uh, IP if uh, th they have agreed to it, right? Yeah. So the fact that they've got an agreement with them, 
makes me think, yeah, so Ugh. clearly they're going to have a Spyro 4 at some point. I mean, the... Which is exciting. I mean, It's got to be I, on its way, surely, at this yeah, point. Y yeah, I think it's not going to be that Hopefully. long. Hopefully. Next year. I'd love a Spyro 4. I would love a Spyro 4. Spyro 1 was like the first video game I ever played ever, so I hold that series very near and dear to my heart, so I'd love to see an actual full-blown sequel Spyro 4 like, like of Crash Bandicoot. Spyro. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, speaking of, uh, no, nah, that's a bad seg. Uh, sorry, Final Fantasy M Brain, been up here very early. It's hard to process my thoughts. Yeah. Um, sequels that are bad, for, or not just sequels, it's kind of a sequ- it's a sequel, but it's also a port. Oh. A support of a, a much, much loved franchise by a lot of people. And it involves uh, lightsabers and storm oh, oh, Fuck it, Star Wars Battlefront oh, 2. I can't read this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I oh, forgot about that. Struggling. I didn't have it on my new bulletin, actually. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. The. Oh, because. Oh, man. That. Yeah, like, oh. that online. Holy shit. This may have. This might be one of the biggest, laziest ports of, like, an online game I've yeah. ever fucking seen in my life, ever. When it came out. Uh, I could only allow 160 people online. Uh, yeah. You can't do parties, so you have to keep no. on refreshing until like you see the same server that you're in, which is a load of fucking dog bollocks. Uh, yeah. Game's broken as well. Yeah, I've seen, uh, I've seen clips of it. Models are flipping and flying, and... Uh, and I, I believe it takes up 90 gigabytes of your it's, hard drive. It's Yeah, it's a pretty big game as well. It, it's, more, which, it's more than 50 gig. It's funny because... Um, which is funny because, uh, the original is, like, tiny. Yeah, which is really odd. And yeah. it's not even that, po it's like the most unpolished port I've ever seen in the world. And, and apparently not only that, have... they've so they've also uh, found a code, and some people found a code in the game where someone's mod has actually been used yeah. to, without yeah. them being told. Their permission, and, yeah. Which is, oof, that's fucking bad, mate. Yeah. That is not good. Yeah. Oh my word. These are two of like one of the most loved PS2 games out there. And uh, people have been clamoring for like a proper online mode for them. And uh, oh my god. Uh, is it a a Aspis? I think. A Asper? Esper? I don't know I like the, name the whole details of this, but yeah. It sounds like they just shat it out. Yeah, they did. If I'm being honest. Yeah, so it really seems like they did not care. They just, they just wanted a quick buck. They just out. wanted a quick buck. And I think yeah. they did that with another Star Wars game as well, where it was a really bad port. I can't remember what one it was. They're not doing great with Star Wars at the moment. No, I they, they probably shouldn't have let them port any more old Star Wars games after this. No, I probably think not a good really, idea. <laughs> yeah, I think they're really screwing it up. So I think you should find another studio. Yeah. Um, aren't who's these the studio who did Battlefront? Aren't these the people who are doing the remake for Knights of the Old Republic? I believe so. Oh my god. Let me check. Battlefront. Was it Star Wars Battlefront 2? Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, but collection, it's one and two. Oh, battle. That sucks, man. Front. That game was really fun. I would have loved to have like a modern, like, Polish port of it. Especially online, too. Who's the people who published this? Uh, Asp yeah, you're right. Ask for. Oh, God. Asper, yeah, don't yeah. let them. Don't let them touch anything. Yeah. Jesus. Oh. You ever played Battlefront, Ben? I never played Battlefront games. No. Oh, so I mean, you were robbed of like, the Mos Eisley Jedi fights that apparently don't even work in this collection. <laughs> oh man! Apparently, <laughs> the the offline stuff apparently works okay, like it's fine, but yeah. the the online stuff is apparently unplayable most of the time, <laughs> which is not good. Oh, it's no. pretty terrible, especially because online is its main focus. Isn't that like the main point yeah. of like re re releasing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that sucks. Its campaign oh. for, for for two was really good as well, and there's also I think the Galactic Conquest. Uh, I remember you could like play as a faction from either the prequels or, or the um or the, the original trilogy. 
Like, you'd be rebels, or the stormtroopers, or the clones, or the droids, and you can choose a faction, and you can do, like, this weird, cool, like, conquest system where you fight over planets, and you take it over the solar system as you go through, and you unlock, like, perks and shit. And apparently, oh. from what I've heard, half these perks don't even fucking work for it. Oh, man. So, uh, you're basically doing a hard mode of Galactic Conquest. Are they even going to be able to patch all this? This don't sounds know. like so much. I don't know, but its reputation is already long far gone if you ask me oh man that's sad. big yikes yeah that's uh yeah so in general the video game news i feel like that's pretty much all of it oh this t segment i feel like i don't really have anything else to add damn uh, it when will a game finally game show that the droids are always the best faction and they just look weak in the prequels <laughs> look, super battle droids look radical as hell. Why are they? Aww. Why are they fodder like the normal droids? What the hell? They, they just, they just do, man. Everyone's at a core of the droidica. Aww. And they're jank as hell was... in the Battlefront games, from what I can remember. I'm, I feel like I'm so out of the loop now on like the Star Wars universe. I used to really love it, and I feel like I've just really fallen out the loop with how many shows there are now I don't well. really give a crap about the shows I'm more I've definitely more into like the games I used to like uh, the old six films and I of course I watched yeah. like the, the quote unquote new trilogy which is um, yeah. uh, very middling in quality in a, a lot of them yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Um, but no, I, I like the expanded universe, and like I still really yeah. want to play uh, the uh, uh, the sequel to Fallen Order as well. Isn't there? Yeah, that's that. Because Fallen Order was a really was, fun game. Yeah. I, I quite enjoy playing yeah, I that heard game. The sequel's good as well. Yeah, me too. And isn't there that other new Star Wars game coming out? What's it called? Outlaws. Something like that. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's not all bad in Star Wars. Well, when it's good in Star Wars, it's it's really damn good. But when what it's bad, it's really to... bad. <laughs> What what happened to um is this still being made? I can't remember if it got cancelled or not. But wasn't Quantic Dream uh the uh, oh yeah, they're doing their own game as well. Like a Star Wars. Yeah, like, they're, 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 that's in the middle of development right now. Yeah, I I don't know what they're doing here. They're, they're doing like the Quantic yeah. Dream thing for Star Wars and like yeah um yeah we'll yeah. we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I I just imagine mm. Heavy Rain but with Star Wars. <laughs> R2D2! R2D2! Oh, press, press, press X to R2D2. R2 D2. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, David Cage has returned. Oh, man. Oh. He's a droid now. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, he voices C3PO in a new game. It's a French C3PO. Oh, oh my god. Oh, why is that oddly fit? Uh, bon anyway, bonjour. Uh, Mind your manners. Oh, my god. Oh. Okay, uh, I think that's it for this segment. Uh, we'll be moving over to part three. Mm -hmm. We will see you in part three. <laughs>